Hi guys and welcome back to another devlog about Skyland. It's been another two weeks and I got some more stuff done. First off, one of you suggested that I should add something so that it's easier to differentiate between objects that have the same color. So I added rim lighting. It is just a basic dot product calculation in the lighting shader, but it makes everything look way better. For the chunk, I took a little bit of a different approach. The rim lighting looked pretty weird on it, so I just made a simple edge detection filter for it. When it detects edges, it basically just lightens them up, but it only does that for edges that are within 25 meters. Everything else is just too far away and you wouldn't even notice the difference. Now to the big subject of today's devlog, pathfinding. As mentioned last time, to make it work I have to voxelize all of my physics meshes. To do that I create the bounding box that is aligned to the voxels and then I iterate over every triangle of the physics mesh and check if it collides with the bounding box of a voxel. If it does collide, it sets a bit in a voxel storage so that I know that this voxel is solid. Instead of this brute force voxelization, you could also use a more advanced rasterization algorithm, but since this is happening on a separate thread anyways, I don't care too much about the performance. A tree right now takes less than one millisecond to voxelize, and that is fast enough for me. So combined with my voxel terrain, I have a world with voxels that are either 0 or 1, depending on if it is an air voxel or solid. For the pathfinding, I chose to use the A-star algorithm. Probably everyone has heard of it once before, but I never used it in a 3D environment. You basically have a bunch of nodes that describe the environment and the cost to cross them. And based on a heuristic function, you traverse through them until you find the targeted position. The nodes that we can move to are the ones that are air and have a solid voxel below them, or the ones that are water. But water has a higher movement cost, so the algorithm usually tries to avoid it and move around it if it is faster. In the background you can see a basic representation of my pathfinding world. Blocks that are neighboring are the ones that we can move to. So now we just run the A-star algorithm and we get a path. But it is jagged, so I added a very simple path smoothing function that looks like this. There are more advanced path smoothing algorithms out there, but this one is good enough for my needs. We are still not done yet because I had to add another little thing. Whenever the world changes, it has to recalculate the path. Since I already kept track of whenever something changes, this was no big problem to add to the existing pathfinder. And because I'm voxelizing physics meshes, I can use this pathfinder in future projects as well without any additional work. Coding enemies is probably one of the hardest things for me, since I never really dealt with pathfinding and enemy AI before. I changed a lot of my coding interface for it over the last two weeks. It works like this. I have a controller which implements certain functions of an enemy and handles the physics of it. So for example, there is a function like attack, jump or move forward. In addition to the controller, I have behaviors which control the actions of the enemies. So the goblin has multiple behaviors like a patrol behavior where he guards a certain position, or the attack behavior where he tries to find the enemy and attack it. They change dynamically based on the situation and allow me to make a more advanced AI for the different enemies. Now comes the more interesting part. Combined with pathfinding, goblins are not only just find and attack you, they even destroy objects that are in the way, so you are no longer safe in your wooden hut. More advanced building materials will be a better shelter against the enemies and at a certain building material they will no longer be able to destroy them. So my idea is that goblins can destroy wooden walls, but when it comes to stone buildings they will no longer be a threat to you. I also changed the looks of the goblin and added simple eyes because the green goblin was just too indistinguishable from the green environment. The skeletons don't burn during the daylight yet, but I will add that in the future. Their behavior is identical to the ones of goblins, but they only have 20 health, compared to the 80 of goblins. The crucial difference is that skeletons will spawn everywhere in the dark during the night time, and goblins will only spawn in goblin camps. The current state of the lines of code is as follows. The engine stayed at 45k and the game went from 51k lines to 53k. The last big target on my to-do list is finally done, pathfinding. What I'm working on next will be up to you. I have a pole on the upper right corner where you can decide between rectals for the enemies, structures that will spawn in the world, like mineshafts, villages and so on. For that I would have to reuse my old editor that I've written for my previous voxel game Polymol or a snow biome, or maybe even on character customization. If you want to talk a little bit about game dev or you want to share what you're working on, you can join my Discord server, link is in the description. And if you want to support the development of this game and you want to get access to the source code, you can check out my Patreon account. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters Lee Grossdale and Shanna W Goddess and all of you guys watching the devlog. I seriously appreciate it. Other than that, I hope you liked this episode, if you have any feedback, make sure to leave it in the comment section and I will hopefully see 
see you guys in the next episode. Bye.